Good morning, everyone. This is John with Gun.Deals. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a, a new setup for me in a very interesting caliber. That is, of course, 6mm arc, as the title implies. Now, this setup is from Ballistic Advantage. It's kind of a hodgepodge of parts that we will go over, mainly focusing on the barrel and, of course, the new cartridge. Now, for those of you who don't know, the 6mm arc was developed by Hornady as basically the pinnacle of performance that you can get in an AR-15 magazine. So the 6mm arc is based off of, I believe, the 220 Russian, which is what the 762 by 39 that everyone loves, and the 6.5 Grendel is also made out of. Now, with that 6mm projectile and the 6 arc in a relatively short, fat case that does, again, fit into an AR-15 magazine, you're getting a ton of performance in the least amount of space possible. Now, the 6mm projectile in general is extremely popular in the PRS world. I believe it is the most popular PRS cartridge in a ton of different calibers and cartridges, Dasher, GT, so on and so forth for the PRS guys, but that's much more reload specific versus a factory 6mm arc. Now, the arc in general, this is a 103 precision hunter load, so this is actually a hunting load. I have a bunch of this and then some 105 Hornady Black. Unfortunately, as we'll get into a little bit later on, the ammunition can be difficult to source and a little bit on the pricey side. But again, the main advantage of 6mm arc is that it runs with relatively few quirks in an AR-15 package. Now, the 6mm arc is by no means the hottest, best performing 6mm cartridge out there. Again, there are a ton of hard, hotter cartridges out there. One of the side effects of having a 6mm bullet in a smaller case is that you are going to get a little bit reduced velocities versus other 6mm loadings, but again, you get a ton of performance in an AR-15. Now, what that means is you can get a 7-pound base rifle that out of the box can hit a 1,000 yards fairly easily with very minimal recoil, meaning that you get, again, a very lightweight package, AR-15 size, not AR-10, DPMS, or some of those hybrid designs. You can get a true seven pound rifle or even sub seven pound rifle in some cases, and again, get that exceptional mid to long range performance. Now, as you see it here in this configuration, this is a 16 inch six millimeter arc, which is definitely in the middle of the road for six millimeter arc barrel lengths. This is not quite the lightest setup as it is definitely a little bit more accuracy focused as I knew I was gonna be doing a little bit more distance shooting with it than I would like a normal AR-15 setup. So the barrel that is in here, this is one of Ballistic Advantage's 16 inch six millimeter arcs. This is the one of their premium black barrels. So it is a nitrided 416R stainless steel barrel. And this is in their SPR profile. Now the SPR profile is a copy of the Mark 12 profile. The Mark 12, if you're somehow not aware, is a heavy barrel 556. This is the same profile barrel, however, again, in six millimeter arc. Now, because it is the exact same profile, if I did want to use one of the Ops 12 or had one of those over barrel suppressors and a slightly different handguard, you could actually use one of the Ops 12 suppressors on this barrel. Now, getting into the specifics on the barrel, again, 16 inch mid length gas system, six millimeter arc, one in seven twist, 416R stainless steel barrel that is in this very nice black nitride. And again, is basically a heavy barrel for all intents and purposes. Now, the handguard on this build, this is the Geisley Mark 13, which of course has your Picatinny rail sections at the end, because I did want to natively mount a Picatinny bipod to it. I didn't want to have another attachment in the way. So I went with the Mark 13. This is the 13 inch variation. The upper receiver, this is a BCM standard upper. So it is a mil spec style upper, but the barrel extension on it is a little bit undersized. So you do need to thermally fit the barrel to the upper receiver by heating up the upper receiver to get the barrel to slide in. In theory, giving you a little bit tighter fit, so hopefully more consistent accuracy, so on and so forth. Unfortunately, the accuracy that we got out of this barrel, at least with the couple factory loads that I tested, was not exceptional, especially when we get into the price to performance, which six millimeter arc is a very expensive round. Now the carrier, the carrier is a old nickel boron carrier that I had laying around, and the bolt is a standard 6.5 Grendel bolt. Now, the muzzle device on the build, this is the Reardon SPB, or their single port brake. It is a pretty effective muzzle brake. It's very loud, very blasty, but it's also very, very size and weight efficient. It's about as long as an A2 and weighs about the same, but of course does reduce recoil by 40 to 50%. Now, it also doubles as a mount for the suppressor. The suppressor in question here, this is the YHM Resonator K, which is a 30 caliber can, which you can, of course, use with 6 millimeter. Now, 6 millimeter, 
will work on some 556 five, cans. For instance, the Polonium 556 five, cans, theirs are actually cut for six millimeters, so you can use six millimeter in their 556 five, cans. However, that is not the case for all 556 five, cans, so be very careful and check with the manufacturer before you do something like that. Now, most of the time it was suppressed, and when running it suppressed, we did run into a couple issues, specifically with feeding and extraction. So with this barrel, it is set up very well from the factory for unsuppressed shooting, meaning that it will eject high quality ammunition. The ammunition that we were using was again, the Hornady Black 105 and the, or the Precision Hunter 103. It would eject both of those at about 330-ish, which is basically perfect for an AR-15. It would eject those at about 330 with just carbine buffers and carbine springs. However, when we added the Resonator K to the mix, we would get drastically increased bolt velocities. It is not a flow through can or a reduced blowbot can. So with those carbine springs and buffers, it was way too fast. And so we would have issues every couple magazines with ejection and then also with feeding the last couple rounds because again, that bolt velocity was just so high that it started to outrun my magazines. Now the magazines that I were using when I was unsuppressed, they were 100% reliable, but with the suppressor installed and with the drastically increased bolt velocity, I would have issues feeding the last couple rounds. So the magazines that I were using was the, this is a ASC 17 round 7.62 by 39 magazine. Again, 100% reliable when unsuppressed and a Elander, I think this is a 15 round, also 7.62 by 39 and the Unimag. Again, under normal conditions, unsuppressed, it performed very, very well. 100% reliable, no issues feeding, extracting, ejecting, anything like that. With a suppressor, it was a little bit finicky. So if you want maximum reliability out of your six arc gas gun and you're gonna be switching between suppressed and unsuppressed, you're probably gonna want a adjustable gas block, adjustable bolt carrier group, adjustable gas key, something like that, or at least swapping out your buffers and springs every time you go from suppressed to unsuppressed. Now that is definitely something I could have done, throw in a heavier spring and buffer combo to slow down that bolt and hopefully improve reliability with feeding and ejecting. On most 5.56 five, guns, you can run it unsuppressed, throw on a suppressor. Yeah, you're gonna get a little bit more aggressive bolt velocity, a little bit more aggressive uh, ejection pattern, but it's still going to run just fine. Six millimeter arc is a little bit more powerful, has a little bit more energy, and as far as I can tell, tends to be a little bit more finicky, especially with, you know, less reliable magazines in general, whereas P mags and most AR-15 magazines or 5.56 mags at this point are basically dumb reliable. Now, when it comes to accuracy that I was able to get out of this setup, it was unfortunately a little bit of a mixed bag. So we had a target set up at 100 yards. I started out with 105 grain Hornady Black which was an ammunition that I was actually able to get a couple hundred rounds at a pretty good price that ended up being about $27 a box, which is expensive, but not for six arc, which we'll get into a little bit later on. Anyways, that ammunition shot the first five round group at about one and a half inches at 100 yards. Not terrible, but not fantastic either. So I did a second five round group with that ammo just to check consistency, so on and so forth. The second group opened up to about two and a half to three inches, which is borderline unacceptable for a, you know, supposedly match-ish ammo with a heavy barrel, heavy barrel 416R stainless steel barrel. That's on the premium side of things. It's a couple hundred dollar retail barrel. And then the last ammunition choice that I had on hand, again, I only had two ammunition choices, was the 103 Precision Hunter. Now the Precision Hunter, uh, has a little bit lower of a BC. Again, it's designed more for terminal effects than just true long range performance. And that again came in somewhere between one and a half and two MOA. Now, a lot of six arc guys who got into six arc are probably also into reloading as it is a very new caliber that's also very expensive to shoot factory ammunition. Average box price for factory ammunition in my area is anywhere between $35 and $50 a box. It is very expensive and usually at best you'll get two types of ammunitions, though usually it's going to be a singular type of ammunition available. Now the one factory type of ammo that I haven't tested yet is the ELDMs and supposedly those do perform marginally better and I would hope so again because this should in theory be a very accurate system. We have a very high quality barrel upper receiver combo that should work well, and we're shooting very expensive ammo. 
Hopefully that would give us very good accuracy on paper, but unfortunately as of right now that hasn't happened. Now, that being said, I have taken this setup all the way out to 600 yards, and it was incredibly easy to do so. Even with that 1.5 MOA, you have a very, very consistent drop and almost no wind drift. Now here in South Dakota, it ranges from incredibly windy to no wind at all. So depending on the day that you go out, you might have a little bit of mixed results. However, when I took it out to 600 yards, I had absolutely no issues with it. It was incredibly consistent at 600 yards as well. And on the same day I took the 6 Arc out, I was also shooting 6.5 Creedmoor out to 600 yards. And while 6.5 Creedmoor definitely has more energy on target, it's always gonna win in that category, both of them were just as easy again at that 600 yard mark. Now, 600 yards really isn't far enough to prove out something like 6 Arc or 6.5 Creed. Probably gonna be looking to stretch this out to 1,000 yards in the future, hopefully finding an ammo combo or just breaking the barrel a little bit more to where it's getting that accuracy in a better spot. Even with a very consistent drop and less wind holes at distance, getting something closer to 1MOA on paper would make it a lot easier to get out to those extended ranges. Now, as it stands with this build, I am a little bit disappointed in the accuracy that I'm getting out of it. It is a little bit more quirky in terms of reliability when suppressed versus unsuppressed. And it is a great caliber on paper again to get out to a distance in a AR-15 platform. However, as of right now, unless you have a ton of money or you're into reloading, it's a fantastic cartridge that you probably shouldn't get into. If you're looking for a more cost-effective alternative, the 6.5 Grendel is close in terms of performance. It is a little bit slower, a little bit heavier, of course, being 6.5 versus 6 millimeter. So there are going to be some advantages with 6 millimeter arc. However, with 6.5 Grendel, barrels and accessories and ammunition are going to be much more widely available and a little bit cheaper as well. And you can also get bulk training ammunition that's not particularly expensive at all versus 6 arc where the cheapest ammo you're gonna be getting is probably somewhere between $30 and $40 a box, and it might not perform all that well in your specific barrel. Now, for hand loaders out there, fantastic cartridge. You can do whatever you want with it, and again, it's going to be fairly reliable in an AR-15 as long as it's set up properly. But that's about it as far as this video goes. Let me know what you guys think of the build in general, if there's anything I should swap out, different barrels I should look at, different ammunition I should try and get my hands on, so on and so forth, because I would like to stretch this out to about a thousand yards and hopefully find an ammo that doesn't cost an arm and a leg and can get me closer to a one MOA performance. But with all that out of the way, guys, I do want to thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. I will see you in the next one. Peace out.